Okay, so today I have this micro squirt ECU. This is what's known as an engine control unit. It's having some issues, so it's in my interest to fix it. And uh, apparently it's not, not powering up properly and it's not communicating. So we're going to try and get to the bottom of that today. Maybe learn a thing or two about electronics troubleshooting along the way. I made myself a little test harness. This is an amp seal 35 pin connector. All I'm doing is basically giving it power and ground and then a serial connection to it. So this plugs into the ECU and then we power it up and see if we get any communications. So we can fire up Tuner Studio, which is a software that actually communicates with the ECU. I'm not going to forget to plug our ECU in, of course. We got it powered up by 12 volts. We can turn the power on. Not connected. Communications settings and we can try and detect everything and that fails no controller found continuing the futz around with the settings doesn't really get me anywhere it's clearly not making communication and not connecting so I want to have to figure out something else here we have the VREF signal which is a 5 volt output that should be up and running regardless of whether or not it's establishing connection with the laptop. So we're going to test that and see if we're actually getting 5 volts out. In here, to the back, and then... So volts ground. So right now we're reading a steady zero volts. So when we power this on, the hope is that we see five volts. Okay, that's good. We're seeing five volts there. That means the uh, voltage regulator is working on the ECU. That means it's not totally fried. So we're gonna have to think about something to try next. So now that we know that the five volt output is working, the next thing I think I'm going to test is the fuel pump relay output. So usually what this ECU does when you turn it on is it grounds a fuel pump output, which turns on the relay for a few seconds, at least just until the fuel gets up the pressure, and then it shuts the fuel pump off. So we should see something like ha that happening when we activate the power. All we're going to do to test this is run the output to a resistor, which is then connected to 12 volts. So when this output is active, it's actually grounded. So when it's grounded, we'll see current flowing across this resistor. It'll drop the 12 volts and we'll see ground here. When this output is floating and basically doing nothing, so when the fuel pump is off, you'll actually read 12 volts on this fleet of the resistor because there's no current flowing and then therefore there's no voltage drop across it. So what I'm gonna do is connect the oscilloscope probe up to the side of the resistor for the, that's connected to the fuel pump output. And then let's see what happens on our oscilloscope. I'm going to hit the power right now. Alright, that's pretty good. So it's a very short amount of time before the ECU powers on and then it basically comes online and decides it wants to turn on the fuel pump. And then over here the fuel pump should be on and that's uh, only a few seconds worth. And then boom, it shuts off, which is what we expected to see. So that means the fuel pump output's working, so the ECU is running its code more or less, doing what it's supposed to do. There's just something wrong with the communication with it. So we're gonna try and dig into that a little bit. So what I've done here is I've made a little back probe out of some resistors and diodes to stick in the back of the serial connector. And then this goes over to the ECU and connects to it. So we should be able to see what the ECU is receiving and try and transmit out uh, for the serial to connection. So next up, since we have this all connected, power is turned on and we have the ECU connected, we can go ahead and look at our oscilloscope here. What we're reading on the output. I have the user interface pulled up over here with the test port button. Looks like we're getting some intermittent connections now, so this might be able to actually tell us a thing or two. So we're going to set up the oscilloscope. We've adjusted our trigger settings so that when an edge happens, it will try and do its best to capture it. So let's hit test port and see if we can... Okay, 
So we got something there. So we've captured our connection request from the PC here. Yellow is channel one. That's what the PC is sending out. It's sending some data to try and initiate a connection. And then blue is what the ECU is responding with. And it's trying to confirm that connection. Um, so obviously something doesn't look quite right with this. We've got the yellow isn't really staying consistent. It's going, it's ground reference kind of going all over the place. And then it kind of couples with this uh, channel two response. So our oscilloscope ground is connected to the ECU ground. So it is seeing what the ECU is seeing at its serial input. Uh, so just off the bat, it looks like something's wrong with our serial ground. Uh, we'll have to dive into that a little bit deeper, but the most important part is we are getting a connection request and it is responding with something. We're not gonna dive too deep into trying to decode this and figure out what bits are what and everything. Um, but let's just take a look at our serial ground and uh, see if we can find anything wrong with that connection. So taking a little bit of a closer look at the ECU, if we go around to the back side, it's difficult to see in camera, but I notice a little bit of a bulge on one of these traces. So I picked away at it a little bit and this trace right here completely fell apart and there's a little bit of a gap there, a little bit of a separation. Uh, and that is actually our serial ground input. So that's been fried. It looks like it overheated the trace bulged a little bit and separated and it was not making a very good connection. So by scratching it off a little bit, I kind of got rid of all that loose material and I'm going to have to resolder that connection right there. Okay, I think that went pretty well. It was a bit of a pain getting that connection in there bridged. And it's very hard to see, but it's not shorted out with the other two pins next to it. So let's just do a quick continuity check with the multimeter and uh, make sure that it is actually making connection. Okay, so we'll go to serial ground and then cut to the pin for serial ground. All right, seems to be a pretty good connection. So uh, let's try firing this thing back up and see if it makes connection. So we can see in the oscilloscope here, this is the first packet coming in from the laptop requesting a status. And this is the response from the ECU, which probably goes on for a little while. We have no issues with the signals leaking into each other. Uh, and it looks generally like the ground is set up uh, much better on there. So we fixed that for sure. And uh, let's see if we can make connection here. So, not connected. Let's turn the power on. Oh, look at that, we already got a connection. All right, so that's working pretty well. We're getting readings, of course, the readings aren't exactly accurate. Throttle position's going everywhere. Coolant temp is all over the place, but that's because none of these sensors are actually connected. So that is completely to be expected, but point is we're getting connection it's reading the settings from the ECU no more communication problems so uh, this ECU is now up and running and ready for whatever project I want to use for it maybe my E46 BMW maybe a Volkswagen Vanagon I don't know we'll see but uh, thanks for watching and I hope we both learned a couple things in this video who knows maybe I'll make more like it to come